everyone. My name is Ella and today we have joining us... Hello, my name is Georgia and we've also got... Hi guys, my name is Simon. Fantastic. So then we've got a couple of things to go through just to make sure that you stay safe and have lots of fun with us today. So number one is wear comfortable clothes with trainers or bare feet. Don't wear socks if the floor is slippery. Number two, clear a space to dance in. So tidy up anything that you could fall over and just check that you've got enough room to dance safely. Number three, if any movements hurt or you feel ill, then stop dancing, sit down and rest. Number four, have a drink when you finish dancing. And number five, have lots of fun. Okay, it's time for name and shape. So we are each gonna say our name and you can make any shape that you want with your body. So I'm gonna go first and then I'll pass to Georgia, who will then pass to Simon and then it'll be your chance at home to try doing name and shape. So I'm gonna go first. My name is Ella. Ella. Fantastic. Pass to Georgia. Thank you. My name is Georgia. Georgia. Simon. And my name is Simon. 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 Fantastic. And we're going to pass it on to you at home. So it's your turn to do name and shape. Brilliant. It's now time to get warmed up. So we're going to start with some slow movements. Get a little bit quicker. Get super quick and finish with some stretches. So Georgia, can you lead our slow movements and our quick? Yeah. And then I will do our super quick and stretches. So if you want to start nice and upright, nice and tall and follow along with us. Thank you, Simon.
Today we are going to explore Jaysmer Desert Festival. This festival takes place in the desert in India. At the festival there is camel racing, turban tying competitions, music and lots of dancing. There is even a moustache competition. This desert festival happens every year in February to celebrate the local culture and heritage. Watch this video now of some more information. today we are going to remember our desert festival dance. So we're going to start by moving our hips side to side and then I'm going to add on my arms reaching up. Brilliant at the same time. And we're going to do this eight times. So we're going to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Fantastic. Our next move so we're going to do a big circle of our arms, nice and low, to the sides, up to the top. And you're now going to cross your arms in front of your face, in front of your body, and then bring them back down. Lovely. Let's do that again. So we come all the way up the sides, up to the top, cross the arms, and down. And this movement can be repeated. So we can keep copying it, keep repeating. Good. Try and make this movement as big as you possibly can, really reaching and stretching. Lovely. Now at this festival, they wear beautiful big costumes and robes hanging down from their arms. So as you do this movement, imagine showing off those costumes and all of the colours and textures that are on them. Brilliant, so we're going to do that circle move twice. So from the top we start with our eight little reaches. 
side to side. Brilliant. You might have seen one of the dancers doing that move. We then go into our big circle. Up. Crossing over. Coming back down and the other way. And again, sorry. Lovely. Good. And we finish down. Great. Let's try going from the top with Simon's music. Thank you, Simon. Brilliant. Ready, guys? So, one, two, three. move from here we're going to bring our arms up to second position so a nice wide position with my arms and I'm going to think about pivoting to the side so I'm doing a bit of a turn to look to the other side yeah lovely just be careful of the space that you're in <clears throat> you might not be able to do a turn or to travel far and that's okay you can just do a nice twist like George is doing Great. Once we've pivoted to this side, we're going to go the other way. Big pivot. All the way around to face this way. Yeah, lovely. So let's add that pivot on from the top. So we start with our eight wiggles. Good. We then have our big circle up, crossing the arms. Lovely. And again. <clears throat> and down, opening up to the sides. Pivot all the way around. Twist, yeah, down the other way. And twist. Lovely. Let's try doing that move, those moves all from the top with Simon. Thank you, Simon. Awesome, ready guys. So one, two, three, four. Fantastic, really, really nice. So we're gonna add on our final move from our rotation. And that is our wrist rotation. So I'm thinking about moving, rotating those wrists. Lovely. And you can go either in or out, or whatever feels good for you today. If this is a bit painful or it's hurting, then you don't have to do the rotations. Yeah, you can stop and do what you need to do. Brilliant. So we're going to move these rotations all the way up to the top and out to the sides and down. Good. So that movement without the rotations goes forward, up high, to the sides and down. And let's try it with the rotations now. So we go forwards, up high, to the sides, and down. Brilliant, give those wrists a shake, they deserve a bit of a rest. Fantastic. Let's go from the top, adding all of those movements together. Thank you, Simon. Awesome, ready guys? So one, two, three,
really nice work everybody. Give those wrists a shake, give the rest of your body a shake if it needs it. We are gonna think about this shaking for our next movement. So after our wrists, we are then going to shake one of our arms. And we're gonna start up high and we've got four shakes. So, and we're gonna come gradually down. Good, so you're gonna start high, high, maybe medium, medium and low. So you're gonna come down with those shakes. So let's try that, so we've got four shakes. Brilliant, let's try again, but with the other side. So you've got four shakes coming all the way down. Lovely, let's try one again, and four shakes. Fantastic. So we're going to do that move on either side. So we've done our wrist rotations coming all the way around. We'll then go shake, 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 shake. Fantastic. Let's try adding that all together from the top. Thank you, Simon. Awesome, ready guys? So one, two, three. we finish our dance for today and that move is going to be a twist so we're going to think about twisting our body towards the back and you are going to add on whatever arms you want to your twist so maybe you want to bring your arms out to the side as you twist maybe you want to bring them up high as you twist. Oh yeah, Georgia's doing something great with her elbows. Maybe with your hands on your hips. Or you might decide to kind of move your arms as you twist. You also do that movement. Lovely, so we're going to do four twists. So you're gonna think about twisting one way, coming round and the other way. Good and the other way and one last time twist lovely so let's try doing those twists up to speed thinking about your arms and how you might use your costume all those colors so i'll just count out are we ready to try doing our twists three two one twist one good really reach twist two twist three and twist four fantastic now you might decide to keep your arms the same for all of your twists or you might decide to do something different with them each time you twist you can choose at home what feels good for you you can keep changing it up or you can keep going with the same one Lovely, and after these twists, that is going to be the end of our dance. So you can create any final position that you want, just to show that it has finished. Maybe it's a celebratory position, we finished our dance, or it might be a little bit smaller. You can decide what that is. Wonderful, let's go from the top with Simon one last time. Thank you, Simon. Awesome, ready guys, so one, Two, three, four.
Great, so for our creative task today, we are going to learn some specific dance shapes and movements from this traditional Indian dance. Now these are just using our hands and they're called mudras, mudras. And mudras are used in this traditional dance to tell stories. So different shapes with your hands represent different things like animals or plants and they can be used all together to create a story. So today we are going to learn four different mudras but if you enjoy doing this then I really recommend have a research and learn some more because there are lots and lots to learn. So our first thing we need to do is to get our hands warm because this is a quite intense work so maybe Start by just giving them a nice rub, get nice and warm. Really good. And we're going to do some splats, get them nice and energised. Brilliant. And um, finish off with some shakes. Good. And if any of this becomes a little bit too much for your hands or your wrists, then stop the video um, and you can either come back to it later or um, you can maybe try doing these mudras with a different body part or even with your whole body if that feels like a good decision. So the first mudra we are going to learn is something called a deer. Now deers are animals that we know very well but in mudras there are two different types of deer so you can choose which one you want to do. Our first mudra we're going to have our hand kind of like a big high five nice and flat and I'm going to bring my thumb forward so my thumb is facing the camera facing me and then my two middle fingers so this finger and this finger are going to touch my thumb now this can be a little bit tricky at the start so you might just like Georgia did actually might want to kind of move them down to help them and you might not be able to make this shape quite yet and that is absolutely fine but this is the shape that you're looking for so I've got my thumb in front middle finger and the next finger and my two fingers that are left are really pointy up to the sky and these look like antlers for your deer you might recognize it looking a little bit more like a deer now <laughs> this is its mouth and these are its antlers. Brilliant, so that is our first mudra, our deer number one. Give it a shake. Can be quite hard keeping those nice and still. We're now going to learn a different mudra, deer. So let's start how we did before, high five. And this time we're gonna move our thumb forwards the same, but we're going to move our two first fingers so my first finger and my second one to meet my thumb so my first finger meets my thumb and my second finger meets my thumb so I've actually got two fingers the two end fingers are left it doesn't look much like a deer yet but wait till we turn it on its side <laughs> and then it looks a little bit more like a deer so you've got your antlers and then again this is your mouth and it can move how you want it to your deer mudra brilliant so let's practice those two mudra deer so we've got deer number one start with our high five thumb middle finger remember and the second middle finger and then you've got your antlers Deer number one. Lovely. Give it a shake. Ooh. And then we've got deer number two. High five. Thumb in front. First finger. And then the second finger. And then you've got your deer. Brilliant. Oh, our eyes meeting, Georgia. <laughs> Lovely. Really nice. Really, really nice. We are now going to learn something called a diamond mudra. So a diamond mudra 
it's quite a bit easier than our dear. So we're going to start with a high five, like we always do. We're going to turn it up so my palm is facing the ceiling. And I'm just going to bring all my fingers together. As if I'm trying to hold maybe a peanut or something quite small in those fingers. Or a diamond. <laughs> so you're just going to bring those fingers up all to one place. You're looking for it to really be pinched. Brilliant. And this is a mudra for diamond, but it only stays a diamond as long as the fingers are pointing up. If we turn it up the other way, it turns into other things. So this means diamond. Brilliant. Really, really nice. So we've got three mudras so far. If it's becoming a little bit too much on one hand, you might want to try making them on the other hand as well. So you can keep mixing it up. We've got our final, our final mudra now, and this mudra is called an open lotus flower. So lotus flowers are really important um, in the culture and they mean a lot and they're often used in these folk dances. So we're going to start with our high five as usual. And again, we're going to turn it up so the palm is facing the ceiling. So you're like this. Brilliant. Now. You are now going to think about your little finger stretching towards your thumb. So it's going to stretch towards my thumb. And my other fingers are naturally going to start to fold, start to join it. And you're not going to try and touch that. You're going to get as far as you can, keeping them straight. And that is your lotus flower. That's quite a tricky one. That's quite a big stretch on your palm. So if you need to stretch out, then please do. But I'll show you once more. So I start with my high five, turn it upside down. And then I've got my little finger that comes in. Good. And the other fingers start to roll up. And then that is your lotus flower. So my fingers are kind of in a staggered line. Yeah, great. Lovely. You can try it with the other hand as well. So I've got high five, turn it upside down, and then I peel those fingers to make this beautiful lotus flower shape. Oh, beautiful, Georgia. <laughs> Lovely. So we've got our four different mudras. So we've got our dear number one, which is high five, two middle fingers, and our dear. We've got dear number two, which is high five, two first fingers, stretch. We've got our diamond, which is high five, turn it upside down, fingers in, diamond. And then we've got our lotus flower, which is high five, turn it upside down, fingers curl up to create the lotus. Brilliant. If you want to go over those um, those mudras a little bit slower, then please stop the video and rewind. But we are now going to have a go at creating our very own folk stories using these mudras. So you at home can decide what order you want to use your mudras. You might create a story, maybe of your deer traveling around the space, maybe turning into a diamond then the diamond maybe travels before meeting a lotus flower landing in it you can create all sorts of stories and folk stories using your mudras you can also create your own so maybe you might want to create different shapes with your fingers that you've been inspired by these mudras. So you can go as crazy as you like, and this is all about creating stories with those fingers. Brilliant. Simon, if you could just play for a, um, a minute or so, and we are gonna improvise these folk stories. Thank you, Simon. So, one, two, three, four.
fantastic. Georgia, I love watching the different stories that were coming out of all these different characters. And I'm sure that you at home had lots of fun playing around with these different mudras. And like I say, if you want to learn any more, then please do Google mudras and I'm sure you'll learn many, many more. Really great work. So it's now time to do a couple of stretches and to cool down. So follow along with Georgia and myself. Thank you, Georgia. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Georgia, and thank you, Simon. And I hope you had lots of fun at home. Goodbye. Thank you for taking part in this tutorial. If you'd like to feature in our calendar of festivals film at the end of the year, then film yourself doing the dance you learned today and send it to l.whitlock at magpiedance.org.uk or you can message it to 07597266717. If you're not sure how to send the video, click on the link in the description and it will help. Have fun!